Welcome to the first ever Yorkshire Angler Show. On today's show, we've got a little bit of this. On the menu today, we have a German rig, guys. A little bit of that. Team Pollock pipes away. And a whole lot of this. I'm glad to see that you lads don't have the heating on as well. <laughs> after my own heart. You said you weren't going to mention that. No, 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 no. This, this, this is perfect temperature. This is perfect temperature. As it's the first ever episode, we thought we'd show you a few behind the scenes, the B-sides that don't quite make our main videos. And what better way to start than showing Nidja's PB car from this year. And he is 11 ounces. Not massive, but... Points on the board. Congratulations, Niji. Yeah. And here's a top tip on how to deal with the shrubbery before the river season starts again. Nettle bites. <laughs> Niji bites. I didn't know them nettles bit you. <laughs> Tell you what, jungle juice don't work on these bounding nettles, does it? But you can keep midges at bay. Oh, bad. You go it wrong way. <laughs> Rivers that way. <laughs> what are you tunneling to? Next cell. <laughs> And finally, you guys get to see a lot of our fishing expeditions, but you never get to see the journey there, which can be quite eventful. To be fair, that weren't the biggest PB. No. No, not, not on the catch pieces now. I had a £2 free to order out of Asking Lake, alright? I apologise. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I mean, like we say, we like to have a little bit of fun, don't we, on our way to uh, fishing events. So, uh, like Kurt says at the start, you'll see some plenty of B-sides and some more eventful stuff as the weeks roll by. With it being the first ever Yorkshire Angler show, we thought we'd start off with a bang and we've got an absolute treat for you today. And it were an absolute treat for us as well, wasn't it? Oh, definitely, definitely. We managed to get a local legend down to spend his time giving us some top tips and sharing some of his memories. Mr. Julian Cundiff, hope you enjoy. So the next question we've got for you Julian is, we have plenty of waters around, could you tell us a bit of history behind the local name waters you've fished yourself over the years? Wow, well, yeah, yeah, that goes back. Um, I suppose I've been lucky to fish what I, in the past we used to call them circuit waters because it was a circuit anglers would travel around because there was so few waters that were big fish waters it was like a circuit of water so if you fished A you went to B, went to D, went to... so it was a circuit of waters that were called circuit waters so for me the circuit waters I've fished obviously have been Drax, Three Lakes, Motorway, Tylery, Tyrum, uh, you know that, that those are the, the yeah. what I would say local local ones and what would happen is after you'd finish with one water you would go back to it about four or five years afterwards and the carp had grown probably three four five six pound heavier so you know that's and then certain waters click with you and certain yeah. waters didn't so drax which i fished in the 84 85 86 could never catch a 20 pounder there because there weren't any 20 pounders in there despite people saying there were <laughs> there weren't 20 pounders in there the best i had was 1912 so then I went to the Tylery, which is, um, in those days it was known as East Yorkshire, then it became Humberside, I think it might be back to East Yorkshire, yeah. and I'm not quite sure, but my second fish there was a, a 20 pounder, and I realised that it's actually the water you fish, the same tactics, but you, you have to have the fish in the water to start with, yeah. so I fished Tylery for a few years, but I wanted to catch a 30 pounder, there was no third, I, no there weren't any 30 pounders in there, the best was 27, 28. Uh, I went to motorway and then caught the motorway fish at just over thirty pounds. And you know, and by the time I'd finished there and went back to Drax, those fish were mid twenties. So then I went back to Three Lakes and those it's fish were thirty. Yeah. It's a circle. Right. And I've always been one of those people that you can fish where you want. So if somebody says you shouldn't fish there because you've always fished there, it doesn't make any difference what if other people. It. Yeah. it makes no difference what other people say about your fishing if you want to fish one walk for the rest of your life could not make any difference if you enjoy it yeah. don't fish one walk for the rest of your life and then say well it's crap here <laughs> <laughs> oh i can't catch a 30 pounder 
Yeah. But if you find something you're happy with, then do it. But round here, I would say there's probably at least 20 waters that you could circulate round and be very happy with. But oh, yeah, right. all, all those waters, those waters were the premier waters the, that you had to get in. But now you can catch 20, 30 pounders round here. Not easily, but there are lots of waters that hold 20 and 30 pounders and bigger that used to hold singles and doubles. So we yeah. are blessed round here. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I suppose we are. Yeah, it's but a lot of places nowadays are becoming club waters and syndicates, that's the only problem, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's what I would say is, you've always got to look to the future, so yeah. don't just think about this year, get your names down on waiting lists. Yeah. And every year, don't just put your name down in 2020, and then in 2020 say, I'm heard, and the bloke goes, well, every year we, if anybody does contest us back, you're off the list. So to me, you want to be chasing up your permits. And, you know, if the permits get, if, if the permit is from the 1st of April, then I would definitely be checking up in March every year to make sure I was on the list. And I would definitely check it up on the 2nd of April because we get so many people put the names down on waters. And then when it says, when somebody says you've got to pay you 150 quid, they're like, ah, oh, maybe not. Yeah. And you want to be, so every water that I'm in, I'm always chasing up just before yeah. and just after to make sure I'm on the waiting list. Yeah. So that's a thing that most people make the mistake. They put the name down and then they don't bother chasing it up, you know. Yeah. That, so that's a big mistake that people make. Yeah. Good tip to be fair. Yeah, it's yeah. a very good tip. Three Lakes Carp... Which, which Three Lakes is that? Sorry, George. Three Lakes near Selby. Ah, right. Ah, right. Yeah, Three Lakes not, Carp Syndicate near Selby, which a lot of people... I used to fish there in the 80s and early 90s when it was three separate lakes. Yeah. Car lake Three was a carp lake. Lake Two was a sort of the unknown quantity. It was a bit of course, bit of carp, and Lake One was the match lake. So Lake Three had ten swims on it. The carp in there in those days went to probably... Uh, 25, 26, 27 pound. Now, if you went in winter, there wasn't many people fishing there. But once the first fish started getting caught, and once it got to April, it was rammed. You'd have 11 people in 10 swims. It was that bad. So I would always go February, start in February, maybe catch me fish in March. And then by the time it got to April bank holiday, it was like rammed. There's no way I was... It was like World War Three. I, <laughs> I remember one year I had, I had a couple of high 20s, 27, 12, 27, 4, in the early 90s. That was big fish. And the owner said to me, in town, I bumped into him in town, he says, I haven't seen you for a month or two. I says, to be honest, Paul, I cannot fish there when there's like 11 people fishing 10 swims with three rods on, and those fish used to turn off. And he says, well, how can I persuade you to fish it? Well, I didn't want to have an exclusive swim or any of that old rubbish. I said, well, have you ever thought of turning it into a syndicate? And he says, I haven't. I said, why don't you knock all three lakes into one lake and make it a syndicate? So we discussed how much he earned from it over a year. I mean, that would ruin his wife. He used to have to cycle around, chase up day tickets. People would come late, leave early to save paying for. <laughs> typical Yorkshire. Typical Yorkshire. Yeah, yeah, typical Yorkshire. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So in the end, we, he told me what he earned. And I said, well, I think I can get 40 people paying £400 a year, which is 16 grand. So that's 16 grand in your hand, 1st of February. You don't need to worry about it. I'll run it. Um, and what I didn't want to do is having 40 people on a water that probably had probably 25 swims. So it was one week on, one week off yeah. from the 1st of March to the 1st of October, and then from October onwards you could fish all the time. So it meant you got 32 weeks fishing for 400 quid so. for a big fish. So he knocked it through and all of a sudden that was a joy to fish. So from 1992 to 96, 97 I ran it as the syndicate, which was great. And it, you know, most Yorkshire anglers that you know of, Holmesy, Skiddy, all of those guys have fished there and caught very big carp. So that, that was that was one of the local ones. So I was proud of that. Now Roger Hind runs it, and it's um it's now two the back two lakes of syndicate, the front lakes day ticket. But I, I was proud of that. Oh. Tyler obviously was one of the waters I fished in the eighties and nineties, and it's funny the fish I caught at sort of fourteen to twenty six pound were being caught at sort of 25 to 38 pound but unfortunately that got predated by otters it's such a big yeah, water um, you c it's owned well it's, it's leased by hull so it's owned by the 
sand factory, so you can't ever put a fence around it. But that was one of the local time motorway pond, of course, next to the M62, which the whole club own. I had the thirty pound from them. Again, that's just starting to come to its into its, its producing cart now to mid thirties. Wow. Uh, Drax, of course, that was the first lake I fished. That, of course, now is Dead Man's Shoes, or no publicity, but as I'm not, I'm not a member, I can talk about it. Um, that's got car up to probably 45. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, so that's, you know, that's, that, that's a good water, but you just, it's a one, I mean, you might be able to get a one rod day ticket, but again, that's a, a water that holds really big carp, but there are plenty of name waters around here, but if you want to catch a big carp, you just want to catch a big carp, there's loads of places, but around here, there's lots of places for doubles, 20s and 30 pounders. Yeah, absolutely, which, I mean, it's, there's always a, an ideology that's harder in, up north, isn't it? Than, than it is hard up north, but, yeah there's less pressure yeah. you know i know a lot of places down south that will have 10 people on today yeah. whereas up here we'll have one yeah if that so the bigger car and the reason the bigger carp down south one of the reasons is purely amount of bait yeah. up here yorkshire anglers notorious for tightness with bait. <laughs> i noticed down south they go with five kilo of bait what they haven't used if i ring yeah. Up here, they take five kilo of bait and they come back with 4.9. <laughs> they take back, I mean, the Yorkshiremen must love the ready made. They take it back, they don't have to keep it frozen. And that is a big difference is the amount of bait we use up here compared to the amount of bait that is used in Essex, Kent. They use far more bait, there's more people. And it, it, a lot of the big water, a lot of the big weights down there, down to bait without a shadow of it. Up here, we have not. A lot of anglers don't know how to use bait properly, whereas down south they do. Yeah, we are tight. <laughs> we are, yeah. <laughs> Careful. I'm glad to see that you lads don't have the heating on as well. <laughs> they have my own heart. You said you weren't going to mention that. No, no, no. no. This, this, this is perfect temperature. This is perfect temperature. So, no, I can't see my breath, so it's probably a little bit warm, to be honest. Just a little bit warm. Can you hear that? What's the, what is that? This is a quick fly round. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got a few questions for you, Julian. We're just going to reel them off, and you yeah. just answer which one you prefer. Yeah. So, uh, tea or coffee? Tea. Ronnie rig or multi rig? Multi rig, <laughs> of course. Laughter or pop up? Pop up. Spod or PVA? Uh, PVA. Uh, we've got front drag or free spool. Oh, front drag. I, I, I can't understand why anybody has bait runner. It's just it's like, it's crazy. There's, there's no advantage to bait runner. It's front drag always. Yeah, this is a good one. I think I know what he's going to say this time here, but well, he's all boots. Um, for me, I would have to wear moon boots, only because I get a suffer with cold feet oh. in the winter. So, Ski-Tex ski -tex light boots are they way less than trainers and they've revolutionized my cold fishing <laughs> so it's, uh, it, it, it's if i could get away with boot normal trainers i would do or good trainers but it's ski tex light to keep my feet warm um mirror carp or common carp mirror because i if there's one common and a thousand mirrors that common will find its way on my own <laughs> mirror carp mirror <laughs> anything other than a common Same as i catch a lot of common yeah. as well this is something we think uh, you might appreciate Julian. Uh, Iron Maiden or Metallica? Uh, Iron Maiden, Adrian. Iron Maiden. <laughs> Although, it was, I mean, I'm not an old school Metallica fan. I love the Black Album. I mean, Thrash, I was more of a hair metal than Thrash Metal, so I didn't get Thrash Metal. But I thought the Metallica Black Albums were the best albums of all time. Although, your traditional Metallica, album, Metallica fan will go, oh, that's not Metallica. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's Maiden. It's Maiden. Fair play. Yeah. Fair play. Um, following on for the music, we've got guitar or bass? Uh, <laughs> guitar. Guitar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you might say that, the old six string. Yeah. Uh, this is a good one. I'm hoping you're going to know. I'm sure you do now. Uh, slash or Kirk Hammer? Oh, uh, Slash. Slash, Slash. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, Kirk Hammer does a great job, but Slash is more bluesy, traditional, my kind of, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But Saul Hudson all the time. They've enjoyed it last night. They were a band on in, in Norton Club and uh, they, they, they did a bit of Guns N' Roses. You'd have enjoyed yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, I've met Slash once or twice and he's the nicest bloke going 
Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Real, just ni oh. real nice bloke, real friendly. And it's, it's something I always say to people, when people are comfortable with themselves, they're nice. Yeah. You know, nice people are nice people, they, they, you know, all the time of the world. Nice bloke, yeah. yeah. True. Great. Is that the slash? I know. Yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll see a picture anyway. I'll, I'll give you a picture you can use. Oh, Brilliant. Thank you. Um, that still got me in, into guitar, then, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, we used to be in a band back in the day. Yeah. 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 Uh, Literally, that song, I remember going to school, guitar teacher, I said, can you teach me how to play uh, Sweet Child of Mine by Guns N' Roses? He said no, so I never went back. Yeah. <laughs> Dead right. <laughs> Guns N' <are> Roses. <no. laughs> Spring fishing or autumn fishing? Uh, spring for me. I think autumn is totally overrated. Yep. When we used to have a close season and fishing kicked off in June, the autumn fishing was great. But once fishing was allowed 24-7, once the bait quality got so good, once there were so many anglers, there's only so many times carp will get caught. Yeah. And I think by if you start in February, March, all year round, by the time it gets to September, October, I just think those carp on most waters, especially with the leaf fall, turn off. Uh, spring, definitely. Yeah, oh. definitely, yeah. Oh, that's good to know. That's that. a yeah, point yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah. brace or thermals? Uh, bib and, bib and, I love my thermals, but bib and brace stops that cold game. Up your back. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Can't beat it. Can't. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> Thermal blue suit, the poo suit. No, they're definitely not one of those. Not one of the blue suits. <laughs> um, buzz bars or pod? Oh, need. Um, I'm a single bank stick man. Yeah. Um, I would have to say pod purely simply because. I can get it on landing stages, concrete, yeah. but I haven't used buzz bars since probably 92, 93. Well, we already knew this, but we didn't want to have three questions. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Rock pod, because it does give me an edge. What's the major advantage for single bank sticks for Is it just getting in different angles? Different or angles, or? you can spread your rods about. Um, better angle, you're pointing, you, you can keep your rods out of the way, you know, you don't want two rods in the middle and trying to nick one pearl one when you're netting fish, you can, sp so I'll have my rods at the side of the swim and I can net in the middle, you can space them out, I mean that goes back to the um, 90s when I fished three lakes and you could fish off the cut throughs then and so you could have one in one and you could have two in two, uh, yeah. and obviously you needed to have single bank sticks and things. But single bank sticks, I don't see any advantage in having, t and folding your reel handles, for what? I could understand if it's so tight, but folding your reel handles. I it's, think it's just a tackle tart thing that yeah, nowadays. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Somebody needs to tell the king he's not got any clothes on and does not look good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ah, yeah, this is an interesting one for me. I, I mean, I'm, I'm a cork man. Cork, cork or abbreviated? I'm a cork man, yeah, I'm yes, a cork yeah. man. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. can't beat it, can you? No, no, it takes me back to the... Uh, uh, it's funny enough on this one, when I was a kid, that my first fish, and I used to have little six-foot rods, and I saw in Bennett's of Sheffield what looked like a beautiful cork handle. My mum and dad ordered it for Christmas. Got it out and it was a plastic handle. <laughs> I was like, how would you tell your mum and dad that that is? It's gone from the best Christmas present in the world to the worst Christmas present in the world. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, no, but it wasn't their fault. Was, so it's caught, always caught. Absolutely, yeah. agreed, agreed. Oh, I'll see, this is uh, an interesting one, isn't it, really? Yeah, this is the final one for yeah. you. Uh, Mark, mate. Yes or no? <laughs> uh, no, because I've never really had any, so... Um, yeah. No, I've never had Marmite, so... Um, yeah, but I think they say, you know, it's, it, I've never had any Marmite, so no, it's... I'm mar marmalade, honey, but not Marmite. We're hoping you were going to say yes, so we could pull a face to the camera. Yeah, no, no, no. Beef paste, but not Marmite. Oh, yes, yes. Well, <laughs> Brilliant. What an absolute treat that was! Oh, brilliant! Brilliant! Thoroughly enjoyed that. You know, got some great tips. Um, and Julian, what a great guy! Um, he sucked us out of coffee. Uh, <laughs> he did. Sorry, tea. He's doing hundred because he's a tea man. A tea man. He'll, uh, he'll curse me for that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no. It, what a brilliant, what a brilliant session we had with him and a brilliant chat. Uh, so thanks again, Julian, for taking the time out and uh, speaking to us. And don't forget, if you wish to see the full interview with countless tips on how to get that edge on your fishing, uh, make sure you sub to our channel and be available very, very soon. Moving on and in today's show, we've got an amazing announcement. As most of you all already know, we held a charity match last year. 
it was at Kathleen's venue in Doncaster, West Woodside, and it was for two great causes. One being uh, Phoenix Heroes, yep. which uh, basically specialised in getting our veterans into catfishing to help with stuff like PTSD, and also Young Minds, which is a charity that deals with children up to young adults uh, with the mental health well-being. Yeah, that's right. We made uh, we made thirteen hundred pounds last year, and we're pleased to announce that this year the charity match two is on the go. Let's take a look at this next clip. Team Pollock pipes away. So you can see from that clip, it's a, it's a wonderful venue called Tyrum Lakes in uh, Hatfield, again in Doncaster. Um, and basically, we're going to be upping the numbers this year. So the lads are going to be battling on against yet more competition. Last year we had 15 anglers, this year we're going to have up to as many as 35. So good luck boys and girls. It's on the 16th of July this year. And I'm going to let Kurt now explain a few of the rules and what we're fishing for, what counts and what doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, Nigi. So, this year's match will also be a carp event, just carp only. However, due to the size of the lake, it's going to be a keep net event also. We have certain places already filled because last year's contestants get to fish it again, but there will be some available, so make sure you keep an eye on all our socials for when the positions come available. That's right, um, watch out on all our social media platforms for the announcement of the event and get in touch with us as soon as possible if you're wanting a place. It's going to be a first come, first serve basis, so don't miss out. Because they do go very, very fast. Very fast. Faster than me running to the pub on a Friday night. <laughs> and we can clip this bit out anyway, so don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping it. <laughs> In other news, we were sad to see a post on Facebook the other day of our local lake where a swan was carrying a death rig. Now, if you don't know what a death rig is, that's probably because you're tying them yourself. <laughs> that's right, guys. Don't don't forget, knowledge is power in any sport, don't matter what you're doing. And if you don't know, don't be afraid to ask because we've got you covered. We're now going to introduce into the show a segment where we're going to show you our favourite rigs, depending on what species you're going to catch, it's going to be different rigs for different fishing, different species, just to give you an idea of what you can do when you're fishing. On the menu today we have a German rig guys. Here's a few of the components that you will need. We have skin link in 15 pound, this is a coated braid, that's what I like to use and I'm going to strip that in a second. You have a hook bead, we've also got an anti-tangle sleeve, we have a bait screw, any size hook you would like, and a medium kicker. One thing, you'll also need a pair of scissors for chopping the braid. You'll need a stripper, this will strip off the coating off the braid for you. And you will also need a knot puller, it just saves you getting that hook in the hand. Start by taking a section of the braid material you have chosen. If you are a beginner, I would suggest taking a longer piece of braid, as if you make a mistake, then there's room for error. Straighten out the braid material as it may have a few kinks in it and then what you want to do is take your stripper tool and strip roughly a few centimetres of the coating towards the end of the braid. Once stripped, underneath there will be a piece of supple braid. This is a lot easier to work with when tying knots towards hooks than it is when coated. Take the hook of your choice and pass the braid through the back of the eye Set the length of braid before doing 5 turns around the shank of the hook. Once this is completed, you will then pass the braid through the back of the hook in order to create a knotless knot. The reason you pass the braid through the back of the hook again is so that the hook turns inwards. Pull down on the end of the braid to ensure that the knotless knot is not going to come loose during your fishing. Snip off the tag end and give one more tug just to ensure that the rig is not going to come loose. Then take your kicker 
and thread it down the back of the braid all the way down onto the hook shank. Maneuver the kicker over the eye of the hook and over the five turns of the braid until in place. Next, take a bait screw and place it over the point of the hook. After, you will add the hook bead which will secure the bait screw in place. It is vital at this stage in the process that you are very careful when placing on the hook bead as it is quite close to the point of the hook. Once completed, the business end of the rig is now done. Next, take your anti-tangle sleeve and thread it down the back of the braid. Set your preferred length on the rig. You can use a measuring tool for this process. The final step is to tie a figure of eight loop. It may be easier for some people to use a bait needle in order to tie this knot. Once completed, take your bait puller and place on the loop you have just created. Place your hook in the point of the scissors, the Nash ones are handy for this, and give the rig a few sharp pulls to ensure nothing slips during your fishing. Ensure all knots are tight by giving them a little tug, and then you will want to snip off the tag end using your scissors. Take the anti-tangle sleeve and pull it over the knot you have just created. Once set, you have a completed German rig. Now to balance it. Take your chosen putty. Break off a small piece of the putty. You will then start to roll and move this in your fingers and hands in order to make it more supple to work with. When the putty is supple enough, you will then place this slightly under the eye of the hook and your German rig is now complete. And there you have it, a German rig perfect for fishing on waters where the carp are spooked by a ronny or stiff hinge and there's too much pressure. And it's always guaranteed to up that catch rate. So that was a perfect little video from our very own Curtis on how to tie a German rig. Very commonly used in carp fishing for uh, the use of a bottom bait or a pop up. And like he said in the video, it's very effective, very easy to tie. But don't forget, if you've got any questions on what he's done, how he's done it, drop us a comment in the comment section or even hit us up on any of our social media platforms. Or even in, if you want to make a suggestion or a, a rig that you want to see for a different species, whatever you want to feature, let us know in the comment section and we'll make it happen for you. The final part of the show this month is where we give you, the viewers at home, some recognition for the awesome catches over the past week. That's right, we sent a, a post over our so social media platforms to get you to send in your catches, being with a chance of being crowned this month's Catch of the Month. Head to head in your catches. I mean, it was a hard decision this month. Oh, very hard decision. Absolute, some absolutely beautiful fish coming in and some specimens as well. Um, but after some careful thought, and having to pick, we decided to go with Gavin. Well done, mate. Um, brilliant, brilliant effort, brilliant angling. I mean, uh, you, you, Gavin managed to uh, catch three absolutely wonderful fish off linear. Okay. Um, he, he clipped up, he sent, he sent him a bit, bit of a catch report, he clipped up to a few different spots and he reaped the reward, so uh, well in mate, well done, well, round of applause. <laughs> but don't forget, it doesn't have to be one particular species, we've no. got a lot of carp picks in this month, didn't we? Oh, hell of a lot of carp. But we want to see your pike, we want to see your barbel, we want to see all the fish that you're catching, even if you've got a boat and you're out sea fishing, send them in to us, the more the merrier. There's one thing we don't want to see though. What's that? And that's bream. Oh, I know. <laughs> I mean, one of our members is uh, really good at catching bream. Yeah. I'm not going to mention any names. Cool, <laughs> cool. <coughs> Handy, <laughs> so, yeah, both of them. And they're, and they're both ginger, bless them. But yeah, uh, anything you want, guys, get them sent in, either via Facebook um, or Instagram. Just just uh, let us know. And if you want to include that match report, catch report, should I say, then send it in. 
And that's it for this month. I have been Curtis. And I've been Nidge. And we'll see you on the next episode of... The Yorkshire Angler Show. Show.